Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. Today we're finally going to begin one of the big projects that I've been telling you about that we're going to do this year in 2019. We're out here at the farm and we're going to begin the Eco Dynamic Forest Garden Project. Let me tell you what it is and let's go check it out. The Eco Dynamic Forest Garden Project, I know that's a mouthful, I just call it the Forest Garden for short, is a project that I did while I was in grad school for one of my graduate class projects where we had to create a landscape design, but I just didn't want to create some just random landscape design. I wanted to create something that interested me and my passions. And what I did was I created a landscape that takes a lot of the big ideas that we hear about out there, such as biodynamic farming, permaculture, food forest gardening, and just the principles of ecology that I learned through my bachelor's degree. And I brought it all into one project to where it creates a landscape that's not only good for people and producing food, it's good for the wildlife, it's good for nature itself and just the functions that happen in ecology and in nature. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. I'll show you what this is gonna look like and tell you a little bit as we go along. And then we're gonna come out here and get everything started. We gotta get a lot of stuff prepared for this. We got fruit trees coming in the mail as we speak and we gotta get ready for those. So let me tell you a little bit more about it and we'll go check it out. All right guys, this is a graphic design that I created during my graduate project over the forest garden. And I thought this would be a great way to give you a kind of a virtual tour of what I have planned in the forest garden and some of the main concepts behind it. I'm not gonna go into full detail about all the plants in this design, but more give you the big ideas behind the forest garden project and a few of the big projects that I plan to put in here. So the main idea behind this forest garden is to create an orchard or a garden that mimics a forest ecosystem. The way we're gonna do that is we're going to make sure we include as much biodiversity as possible so not all of these are going to be fruit trees because if these were all fruit trees I would have way more fruit than I know what to do with but within the fruit trees we're putting in what I call support plants so pollinator trees and shrubs we're putting in different kinds of habitat support for different animals and wildlife so just to kind of give you an idea here this is the main portion of the forest garden this is the more forest side of the forest garden and the way this works is it's in a repeating grid system. So over here, we can kind of give this block an example. So in this area right here, I have a pear tree. And one of the big things that I did in this forest garden project is I tried to make sure that related trees or very closely related trees aren't right next to each other. And the purpose behind that is if we had just straight rows of pear trees or peach trees, it makes it very easy for pests and diseases to transfer from tree to tree. But in this case, the next pear tree over is one, two, three, four trees away. So that's close enough for good cross-pollination, but it's far enough away to where if there's a disease or a major pest, it's a little bit harder for it to get to a related tree. Next to this tree, we have some flowering shrubs such as vitex or chast tree, which is a wonderful tree for bees. And we have some, I think these are button bush. I have this all labeled on another page, what each plant is, but we have two pollinator support trees right next to our fruit tree. And there's another fruit tree over here. This is a peach tree, which is not related in very closely anyway to a pear tree. But the way I've done this is is a repeating grid system, as I said before. The reason why I did that is, is it makes it easy to organize this forest garden, but it also makes it feel as though it's not just straight rows of trees like in a regular orchard. So what it is, is there's four fruit trees in this grid, and then there's four flowering trees. And then within that, there's another block of four berry bushes and I think I put a fig tree in the middle so the reason why I do that is it is straight rows so I can put down irrigation lines but when this all grows in it's going to have different layers different heights of plants and it's all going to feel kind of like a mixed forest system so with that let's talk about a few of the specifics inside of the forest garden so starting in the middle here 
we have the central point of this forest garden. This is going to be a gazebo. And what I want to put here is a gazebo that I can grow some vining plants up. I'm, I think I'm going to put some passion vine on this gazebo because I have a lot of that here. It's a wonderful host plant for gulf fritillary butterflies. The flowers smell absolutely amazing and they're beautiful exotic looking flowers they're very cold hardy here too the the species of passion vine i have are very cold hardy anyways and this is going to be a point to where i can have gatherings i can have lessons if i bring my students out to here we can gather under this gazebo and talk about what we need to talk about that day and we have some raised beds here this can be themed beds so we can put in either uh, herb gardens, spice gardens, or we can put in pot like butterfly gardens, pollinator gardens, and all kinds of good stuff like that. We can move over down here. What this is in this area is a rain garden. So this rain garden here is put here for a reason. This area of the farm, y'all haven't seen it yet, but it holds a lot of water. There's a lot of standing water there when it rains. It'll dry out at certain points of the year, but there's a lot of standing water. And that's not very good for fruit tree production or vegetable production, anything like that, because it stays too wet. So instead of just letting this area grow up in watery weeds and just not useful to me whatsoever, I decided I'm going to make this area productive by creating a rain garden. Rain gardens are used for water infiltration they're used for water conservation they use them in urban areas quite often for storm runoff storm water runoff to kind of help slow down that runoff but in this area this is going to be used for pollinator support so i'm using plants in here that are great at using or they're great at tolerating wet conditions so they can handle those wet conditions and they can also handle dry conditions because this will dry down through parts of the year so these plants should be able to handle both in here and as this goes along I will talk a little bit more about the specific plants I put in here over on this side I will probably move these now that I realize this rain garden is probably going to extend from here all the way out to here it's a lot larger than I thought it would be but I will move these elsewhere but what this is is this is a mulberry tree and they'll get quite large the reason why I have a mulberry tree put in there is because one mulberries are great they're delicious but I'm also using it as a tool in my forest garden so as I have my fruit trees up here there are going to be birds that come in they want to eat that fruit and they cause a lot of damage to fruit trees but they're also very useful in the forest garden because they provide a service during the summer months when they are nesting they're raising chicks they're gathering insects and inside of all that these insects are either causing damage there's going to be beneficial insects here as well but they're grabbing some of those pest insects such as grasshoppers things like that they're feeding those to their chicks so if you think about two birds in a nest and they're gathering for multiple chicks how many insects do they gather in a day so they're providing a great service so it's okay to lose a little bit of fruit but what i'm doing is if i protect these fruit trees that i want to protect then i also need to give them somewhere they can go so kind of creating a sink for them to go protect what you need to protect but also give them an easy place to go so they will just naturally go over to that area so mulberry trees they absolutely love them they'll love that fruit and i think it will work well over here we've got blackberry bushes i have those in rows because they're going to be easier to manage to help keep them pruned because every year you have to prune off last year's flora canes uh, for the purpose of keeping these a little bit more managed blackberries will only produce fruit on a cane for one year so after it fruits you need to cut that back this is going to make it where i can keep everything mulch and mowed in this area and keep the blackberries in a neat orderly fashion so the other big portion of the forest garden is kind of the traditional garden beds here i decided i want to try something new i want to try doing cut flower production 
we have two floral design shops here in my hometown. And I think that'd be a great opportunity to try something different. This is going to help with our pollinators. It's going to provide support for them. And it's also an alternate revenue source from just fruit and vegetable production. Speaking of vegetable production, here we have a large vegetable garden. So I'm doing this more as a traditional garden because it's going to be easier to manage some of the plants I want to grow in a garden setting rather than trying to plant them in amongst the trees. I will plant some vegetable, fruit, and flowering plants amongst the trees here to add some diversity. But what I'd call the main crop production is going to be in an area right here. So as you can see, we have paths going from all four directions in our forest garden. Along those paths, I've included raised beds. This can be what I would consider annual beds. So if I want to change out flowers or vegetables, anything like that, I can kind of create a diversity. I can change it up in certain areas rather than all being a permanent situation. So just an example I have along these raised beds, I have asparagus. So asparagus make great border plants because when they grow out, most people have never seen asparagus when it grows. It's a large fern looking plant. And they're very wispy. They're very uh, attractive looking. I really like how they look. So they will make great border plants. And bees absolutely love asparagus when it flowers because they create a lot of pollen. And going to this pathway here, I have different shades of mealy blue sage here. These are bumblebee magnets. Bumblebees absolutely love mealy blue sage. And it kind of creates a beautiful pathway along the way at each end of our pathways we have an archway where I'll grow some vining plants over that and that will make a beautiful entryway from each direction and at the end of this pathway is a very interesting feature that I want to include I want to include a water garden in our forest garden area so it will create a water source for our wildlife and it'll also create a different kind of different area to observe in the forest garden so it'll make a good place to sit and watch and just relax i want to put in things such as the texas water lilies we can put in some pickerel weed which hummingbirds absolutely love that some yellow flag irises and it just creates more diversity in our forest garden so as this goes along i will i will try to explain more about what's going to go on in this forest garden. I'll explain more about some of the specific plants I'll put in here. But for now, let's go on to getting our forest garden laid out. All right, now that you have a little bit better idea of what I'm trying to accomplish with this project, let's get in the Rhino. I will drive you around and show you where this is going to be happening at and tell you a little bit how I'm going to get prepared to get the first trees put in this year. Let's go load up. The first way we're gonna prepare for our forest garden is with these beautiful mountains of gold here. This is mounds of wood chip mulch that have been accumulating from our local electric company. This is gonna help us so much in the forest garden. This is going to be a way we can help suppress weeds around our trees to decrease that competition. It's gonna be a way for us to increase our water retention and not let the soil dry out being in contact with direct sunlight and air. And it's also going to break down into beautiful organic matter that's going to help us further with our water retention. And it's also going to add wonderful nutrients as it goes along in our forest garden. So now let's go take a look at where we're going to put in this forest garden and how we're going to get all this laid out. guys this is going to be the area that is going to become the forest garden we're going to be putting in things in a certain way that you saw in the grid and now what we need to do is we need to take our flags that i brought along with me and mark out where our trees are going to go to make sure we have the right spacing and we'll see how that looks as we go along so let's get these put in Okay, so hopefully you can see it here. We have our flags laid out to where our fruit trees are gonna go. We also put some of the flowering tree 
stakes out just to where we can know where they're going to go and you can see it goes all the way down the line here and once we get these trees put in where this is going to go that is going to complete our first block of fruit trees on the map and that's the good point of having a computer system like that it makes it to where all your trees are exactly where they need to go and all you have to do is count the squares and know how many feet each of the trees will get spaced it's a really wonderful program well guys we have our first two blocks of trees all flagged out in the forest garden it's not a garden yet but we're going to work on making it into one so we have our first fruit trees coming in the mail in the next few days and as soon as i get those we're going to be planting them out here and i'll do a video all about how to plant your fruit trees and how to plant bare root trees for success so until then if you like this video be sure to hit that like button if you have any more questions for me or have any suggestions you'd like to see out in the forest garden leave it down in the comments i'll be sure to check those out and try to address it in the next videos and if you haven't done so yet be sure to subscribe to the channel go check us out on facebook and instagram and hit that bell icon for notifications and until next time i hope you'll join me right here on the more you grow Thank you.